All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. Welcome back to the channel. We are going to talk about the big fight that's coming up this weekend between Terrence Crawford, Sean Porter, and Jamal Charlo's prediction, which might be the most screwy prediction I have ever heard for a fight. But let's talk about that in this video. back fight weekend is here terrence bud crawford versus sean porter for the wbo championship we have a guy that is a pound for pound top fighter in the world against a perennial uh uh would you call him perennial champion per perennial contender but a three a two-time uh welterweight champion in sean porter in what i think is probably the most evenly matched big fight that we have had this year um I guess some people could say it might be Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, but we kind of knew that Deontay Wilder was kind of like a looking for a knockout, like probably needed a knockout to win. Uh, and we got a great fight out of that. I'm anticipating the same level of competition uh, and a, maybe a slightly closer fight throughout the length of the fight for Sean Porter versus uh, versus Terrence Crawford. Huge show. Absolutely looking forward to it, man. And Jamal Charlo, I'm looking around trying to see, okay, what are people saying about the fights? What do the experts say about the fight? And I ran into something that, that, that uh, Jamal Charlo said in his prediction for the Terrence Crawford uh, for this fight. And he said that he believes that he's got, Sean, he's got Sean Porter for the stoppage in the late rounds. And he was talking to Regis Progray. And Regis Progray was like, man, are you serious? <laughs> Like, man, are you serious? I thought you I thought you bet with your mind, man, and not your heart. Because <laughs> he said, yeah, man, because this is what I'm saying is a screwy prediction. However, he's not the only person that's, is, that is saying this. It's a screwy prediction because Jamal Charlo really did not have much of a justification, uh, much of a justification for picking him other than, hey, man, this guy didn't like my brother, so I'm gonna, uh, so I'm riding with this guy. And this is what you hear out of a lot of people that are boxing. I mean, that are that are betting on boxing, uh, that they, you know, go with the guy that they like, right? Versus the guy that they're really thinking out and saying, you know, can this guy, can this guy win this fight? Um, Regis Prograde, for his part, was like, I got Terrence Crawford. He seemed pretty, he seemed pretty convinced and pretty confident about it, um, and when he said it, so. You know, as far as Jamal Charlo saying that there's going to be a late round stoppage by Sean Porter, I personally think that that is about the last thing that we're going to see in this fight. If we, if I saw, if if Sean Porter was actually able to knock out Terrence Crawford in this fight, I would be immensely, immensely shocked. However, as far as what other people are saying about the fight and um, and the predictions that are going around for the fight. Most people that I've heard are, are taking Terrence Crawford and pretty much treating Ter uh, treating Sean Porter like Sean Porter is a test to be passed by uh, by Terrence Crawford. Glenn Rush, I was listening to Glenn Rush. He's the trainer for uh, for Jeff Horn. He was giving his prediction for the fight, and he said that he believed that the fight was going to be a you know a clear uh, a clear victory for Terrence Crawford. He said probably by six or probably by six or seven points. I think that means um, you know probably by six or seven rounds. Uh, if not, you know you get a knockdown or whatever. But the final scores, I guess when you tally the final scores, um, six or seven point win and a clear win for for Terrence Crawford because he believes that Terrence Crawford knows how to control the the gap between the two fighters and that Sean Porter's best um, best option is to try to get on the inside and 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 kind of rough up Terrence Crawford. And he pointed out something that was really interesting about Terrence. We said that because Terrence, and this is a guy, uh, Glenn Rush, who has, who trained, um, who trained Jeff Horn, who fought Terrence Crawford. He said that in the ring, that the wrestling background for, for Terrence Crawford will come into play because he's very good at tying you up and then you know and basically throwing you off balance when he's releasing you so and then hitting you with long punches when you're still a little bit off balance from him breaking that from breaking the clinch so you know so they were talking about some very technical things in the ring that he believed would give terrence crawford you know the advantages you know the advantage in the fight 
Um, I'm pretty much if everybody that I've seen so far has been predicting Terrence Crawford, but I, I mean, predict, yeah, predicting Terrence Crawford is going to win the fight, but I'll tell you, man, that I think that there is definitely a chance that Sean Porter can pull it out. If Sean Porter is really able to make it a very, very dirty and very, very rough fight and can, can do what he wanted to do, which is get Terrence Crawford out of his, out of his head, because I do believe that that is the weakness of for Terrence Crawford. Sean Porter uh, had said that in a lot of the interviews that he talked about, saying that, you know, if you can get in the mind of Terrence Crawford outside of the ring, that you can get, that you can make him upset, you can get, you know, make him react and do different things that he wouldn't necessarily do if his head was clear or if he wasn't being emotional about it. Um, He said in the ring, he's very, you know, very intelligent, really thinking things through in the ring, but, you know, outside the ring. Now, my, when I was listening to that, I was like, yeah, man, but I have a suspicion that you think that about Terrence Crawford inside the ring, too, because most every time that I've ever seen Terrence Crawford really pushed inside a boxing ring, he has reacted and he has reacted to the guy. Whenever somebody gets up in there and is throwing a lot of shots on the inside, he starts throwing a lot of shots on the inside. He's not afraid to trade. Whenever so, he's really hit hit cleanly. He gets a, he moves on to the he gets he becomes aggressive, and and attacks the guy. Right. So if Sean Porter is able to constantly stay in the face of of Terrence Crawford. I do believe that we're going to see something. We could see something similar to the way the fight between Errol Spence Jr. and 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 Sean Porter went, where it was an inside fight throughout the distance of the fight. Now, if Sean Porter is able to to do that and he's able to get Terrence Crawford to fight like that, I do believe he's got a chance to win because Terrence Crawford is not a primarily inside fighter. He's not somebody that is going to stand. Uh, you know, is going to stand chest to chest with somebody and bang for a pro- prolonged amount of time. Because and, and at least I have not seen that out of him. Now, if he's able to do that, then, you know, that's something else. But I have not been I have not actually seen him be able to do that, uh, actually do that. When I've seen him get um, in those type of exchanges, I've actually seen him get buzzed because there is also the outlying question, the, the question about Terrence Crawford's chin. And whether or not Terrence Crawford is really going to be able to take really clean shots from guys that are not from a guy that is a good puncher. Now, Sean Porter, according to what the experts say, is not the most clean puncher in the world to the head. He's a very clean puncher to the body and can rough you up, but it does not have a tremendous amount of power and he doesn't have a tremendous amount of, uh, of te- technique to the head. However, you know, Sean, uh, Terrence Crawford has been hurt with guys that hit significantly less, uh, significant, do not, you know, who are not as big and not as strong as Sean Porter. And I would not think have as much power in Sean Porter. And that being, um, you know, uh, Yuri Okas Gamboa, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, not Jeff Horn, but Yuri Okas Gamboa. Uh, and green beans. <laughs> we gotta call them green beans. Uh, some BFTB calls them green beans. Uh, Egus Calvinakis, right? The Mean Machine. That's why they call them green beans because name the Mean Machine. When well, Mean Machine caught him and dropped him. Also, you know, you had some some trouble that Kell Brook gave him being able to catch on to him earlier in the fight. And also, I do believe that, you know, one of the strengths of Terrence Crawford is that he's able to make a lot of adjustments and make them quickly, but so is Sean Porter. So if Sean Porter can give Terrence Crawford some problems he really can't figure out by changing the different styles that he fights and being aggressive when he switches to the southpaw, I think he has an opportunity to win the fight. However, you know, I'm not going to go with what Jamal Charlo said and bet on him just because, you know, he doesn't like what he what 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 uh, Crawford had to say about his brother. I think that's a little bit silly. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. But just make sure you watch the fight, support the fight because this is this is a really good fight. This is not a scam fight. This is not this is not like Tim Bradley said about you know what um, uh, Canelo's doing with uh, Macabo which is, you know, orchestrated great greatness. It's not that. This is really two top welterweights, and Sean Porter most definitely has a chance and is a live underdog in this fight. So anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.